Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're gonna discuss about the encryptions. Uh, I know it's a very basic topic, uh, like you know how to do encryption and decryption. But a lot of people are still confused what are different types of encryption. Sometimes people also get confused between the encryption and the hashing. And also, these are uh, some of the questions that you will be asked during the interview if you are going to appear for any of the security positions. So I wanted to clear off some of the basics. Uh, of course, this is not going to be a long video, but uh, just going through some basics, what the encryption is. I uh, will see some examples, and, and that should be it. And probably in the future lessons, we'll deep dive into the encryptions if you guys need. Uh, so hit the thumbs up button if you like this video, and subscribe to my channel for the more video. Uh, let's jump in. So the encryption is, uh, so there is a term called the cipher, and the cipher is used to encrypt and decrypt the data. So for example, if you have, let's say, one set of data which you want to securely transmit or store, um, like, you know, to defend against the unauthorized disclosure or something, and uh, to to also maintain the integrity of the data, you would use the cipher data. And generally, uh, you must have heard the terms like a plain text and the cipher text. So the plain text is the decrypted version of whatever the text that you are sending or information you are sending, and the cipher is the one which is encrypted text. Now, uh, the keys of the encryptions have gotten longer and longer as the computer power has gone grown so uh, like you know nowadays we have a supercomputer who can uh, work uh, like tremendous fast and they can decrypt any data uh, within a few minutes so that's why we have to have like you know long encryption keys and every time we have a new standard coming up like AES and 3DS is now uh, not used anymore because there is a, there are a lot of attacks could be possible and, and all those things we'll see the examples so so here's the basic cipher example as you can see uh, our, let's assume uh, of course this is a simplest example so i have taken like you know very simple uh, simple key uh, you can see we can add two letters so if i am sending any message to a person b and i say hello i'll put the key in which is add two letters to each of the uh, like you know alphabet so h becomes j e becomes G, L becomes N, and O becomes Q. So that's how, like, you know, uh, and of course, this key would be known by the other person, and they would decrypt and will get the message, hello. Now, there is a basic cipher, but then there is a block cipher, which, because basic cipher is, uh, the disadvantage of this basic cipher is, once someone figure out the key, they can decrypt. Uh, so, for example, um, if I uh, like you know, if I'm an attacker, and if I figure out what would be the key, of uh, how H becomes became J, and I figure out that's by adding two letters, I can do the same thing for rest of the letters, and and like you know, can eavesdrop all the conversation. Now the block cipher is a little bit more complex. What it does is the key is at one three two five four five. Uh, so for each letter or for each alphabet, we are going to add a different kind of uh, letters. So for H, since we are just adding one, it becomes I. For E, we are adding three letters, becomes H. So even an attacker would figure out how H became I, they would still have to work uh, to find out what was the key used for E to be uh, to make H. Of course, it's a simple scenario, so uh, you can brute force and figure this out. But in the real world example, uh, that will be a little bit more complex. So these are the main difference between the basic and the block cipher. Now there are two types of encryption that uh, you must have uh, like you know heard and seen everywhere. There's a server side and the cloud side encryption. Now the server side encryption is data is encrypted as it is written to the disk, then decrypted as it is read from the disk, and this is called encryption at rest. So several times you'll be asked like, okay, what's the difference between the uh, encryption in transit versus encryption in rest, and give me some examples. So, uh, so this is the difference. So when you're storing certain data, 
uh, you want to store uh, while it is encrypted. So let's say your server gets compromised and an attacker gets hold of all the data, they'll still not be able to read the data because it's all encrypted. And of course, you won't store key on the same server. Uh, uh, so uh, like an attacker cannot get hold of the key. But yeah, if they even get hold of the data, they won't be able to read anything. And that's why uh, it is always recommended to have the encryption at rest. And the second type of the encryption is the client-side encryption. Now, the data is encrypted by the client before it is sent to the server, then decrypted when the client receives data from the server. So this is called in transit. And the simplest example is the TLS certificate that we are using nowadays for pretty much every site. So if you are going to the google.com, you would see that HTTPS, which is TLS certificate. So when the browser sends a request, it's going to encrypt uh, all the data. So if you want to try, you can open up the Wireshark and, and capture the request and, and try to read through the content. You won't be able to because it's all encrypted. And when it receives, uh, when it reaches to the server, uh, Google server, it's going to decrypt the data. Uh, how the encryption and decryption happens, we'll see in the coming slides. But that's how the uh, encryption in transit, uh, what I mean. Uh, and this is uh, very much required because if you understand, if you are sitting on, like, you know, let's say Starbucks or any public, you're using public Wi-Fi and somebody is eavesdropping all the conversation, uh, you don't want anyone to uh, easily read through the content or, uh, like, you know, uh, get all the content, uh, what you are communicating with the server. And that's why we have this encryption in place. So, the only parties who uh, who are involved in the conversation would actually know what the information is being exchanged. Now, there are two types of encryption uh, techniques that are generally being used. One is the symmetric encryption. Uh, this is uh, very simple, but of course it has its advantage and disadvantage. So as you can see in this image, we have the original text and we have the symmetric key. So. This key would be, you can assume, uh, like, you know, the one that we saw here, let's say add two letters, right? That's the key. So it's going to convert original or the plain text to the cipher text by adding this key. Now, when it, like, you know, reaches to the receiver, uh, whoever is the other party who is receiving this communication, will have the same key, will know the same key, and will be able to decrypt the data and retrieve the original information. Now the key portion here is both sender and receiver have to have a same symmetric key or uh, should know what the key is. And the problem becomes is how do we communicate securely what the key is to the receiver? And that's how that's why uh, like you know the another encryption technique is being uh, used that's asymmetric encryption. Or you can say, like, you know, uh, the one of the example is the TLS. Um, so here, uh, the example of the symmetric encryption is AES-128, 192, and 256. You see this number of bits are being increased just because the computing power has uh, grown, and I'm expecting it to keep growing and growing this encryption because uh, the new and new attackers and researchers are coming out with uh, what, what are the possible attacks at least what are the theoretical possible attacks on this encryption algorithm. So uh, uh, they have to come up with the uh, new and more secure algorithms. So this is what the symmetric encryption is, and this is like a must know for any one of you who are going to uh, like, you know, want to get into any security job because this is very basic. The other form of encryption is asymmetric encryption, and, and that's what uh, we were talking. The earlier symmetric encryption, we had a problem where sender and receiver should know what the key is, and that's very, like, you know, very difficult to securely transfer the key to the receiver uh, and making sure that no one else is, uh, has received the key. And that's why we have used the asymmetric encryption. Now, how this works is, uh, there are two keys, like instead of just one key, you will have two uh, pair of keys. Uh, so one is called the private key, other one is called the public key. So if I uh, or the sender wants to send the plain text here, right, so they're going to uh, encrypt it using the receiver's public key. Now the private key and the public key, the difference is private key is something that I'll, like if it's my private key, only I will have access to it while my public key is something that 
whoever wants to send data to me will have access to it. So I'll publish that public key. Uh, so if you take again example of the TLS, uh, the Google certificate like Google.com will have the whatever the encryption that they're using, they'll have the public key sent out to all the browsers. So they'll use the public key to encrypt the data, and when it reaches to the Google.com, they'll decrypt the data using their own private key. So, so here uh, you are doing the plain text, and uh, using the public key you are doing the encryption. Then the ciphertext reaches to the like you know the receiver. And uh, of course, the receiver in in our example, let's say Google.com, will decrypt the data using their private key and retrieve the original text. Now, the good thing here is you won't have to worry about how do you securely send out or uh, like you know exchange the keys because there is a pair of public key and private key, and the information which is encrypted using your public key can only be decrypted using its paired private key. You cannot decrypt the data using another uh, private key. That's that's how it works. Now, of course, we saw the example of the TLS SSL, and the SSL is also one of the example on how this asymmetric encryption works. So uh, that's pretty much it. I wanted to cover some basics, and uh, I'm sure, like you know, this is uh, something really uh, good, uh, really helpful for you guys if you are uh, preparing for any of the security interview. So make sure you understand the basics, uh, and also uh, just read few articles and see some examples. Also, uh, there are like you know tons of real time, uh, real world applications as well where you can actually try your hands on and uh, figure out what how this encryption works. So let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, thank you for your time and I'll see you guys next week.